coming off that Buffalo loss, like it looked as bad. That's probably the worst I have ever seen them play. On and just effort level was bad. Did you watch Buffalo Intelligence was bad. Well, I know, but this one was like almost pathetically bad. Just from if you add the penalties, the lack of just you know intensity, like how important that game was, division game. They beat your ass like three times. What you know, twice last year. You didn't. They didn't punt once. The biggest part of that game was like, oh my god, are they going to punt? Are they not going to punt? Are they going to force them to punt? Oh my god, this is great. Like that was the highlight of that game. And even though you were still in striking distance, it felt like they were just toying with you. Like, they were just kind of just, eh, you know, we're not really into it right now, and you're not good enough to do anything about it. And they weren't. So my thing is, like, they could go out there, and they could, like, uh, and lose this game. And if they, if it's just a tough physical game, that doesn't mean, it doesn't, he's not losing his job. Like, Bill's done enough, accomplished enough, that even if they lose every single game, he'll be back next year. Arcan? I think that if you're looking at this season, the way a lot of people have, and the way that Tommy Curran and other people have sort of looked at it, and... You heard what Kraft said about not winning a playoff game for however many years. I think that there's maybe something to it there. I don't think this one game, they're going to lose the game and then he's going to get fired like after that game. But if they do lose this game, that really makes a playoff run pretty much impossible. You know, I mean, you have to win out. And I just don't think that anyone assumes that that could happen. So if you lose to this Cardinals team who's not very good, then that may in some offices up there at Patriot play and that may you know sim- signify the end of this season and if the season's over and they're not making the playoffs then maybe that's the next domino to drop I don't necessarily think that it's going to all come down to that one game but I could see how it could does that make sense like I no but isn't there like a like it would not be just there were never gonna, no one's ever going to lose a drive over one thing but like right. when all the bad decisions kind of like you know just bottleneck yeah and sure enough it ends up they're bottlenecking in uh and in, in Arizona a team that is completely dysfunctional and that's the thing like if you lose to a team like Arizona that is terrible defensively, mm. dysfunctional uh, on offense. We heard um, our boy Olofsky, right? It wasn't he say? Didn't he say like this team, this offense is worse than yours? Like what they're going through on defense is worse. Like their entire the Arizona's entire season has been. I a think disaster. Ross Tucker might have said. Was that. Was it Ross? Yeah, yeah, who said that this is yeah. a more painful offense? Yes, than but it's, it's more painful because they have more talent. Like they, have, they have a good quarterback. They just have runs around. Hopkins, who's an all world wide receiver. Connor's a pretty good running back. Like they have talent on that offense, and they're underachieving. The Patriots, no one really thinks. Like you know what I mean? They're underachieving, but no one thinks they're that much better. Like you know, nobody nobody thinks they're on par with the Cardinals and what they have. So to add to that, so you think about like okay, so you're taking a road trip. You're playing against a team that has that's just has so many issues. Let me read them to you because Ben Volan wrote about like all the issues that they have down in Arizona. He says, but the turmoil uh, goes beyond Murray, Kyle Murray, mm-hmm. you know, obviously the quarterback there, and just like how bad he's been. I said, in May, they suffered the death of uh, cornerback uh, Jeff Gladney in a car accident. In August, running backs coach James Saxon was placed on leave after being charged with domestic battery. In November, offensive line coach Sean Kugler was fired after allegedly groping a woman the night before the game against oh, the Mexico, 49ers right? in Mexico City. <laughs> offensive assistant. Uh, Don Schubert was also dismissed for undisclosed reasons earlier this year. Uh, and then you have like the injury and suspensions. Receiver DeAndre Hopkins Tight and Marquise Brown over there, huh? <laughs> didn't play in a game together until week 12. And tight end Zach Ertz suffered a season ending knee injury in week 10. So think about it. Like, to Bedard's point, right? This, is, this should be like taking candy from a baby. Like, we know you have some issues, but theirs are worse. You got a better co- head coach. You got a you got a a head coach in Arizona that has completely lost control, mm. completely lost control, and then I'm not, I didn't even add all the things that former professional football players have said about Kyler Murray. Peterson is that what you're Peterson, talking about? Patrick said Peterson said that Kyler Murray only cares about Kyler Murray, and I heard the midday show. Those guys, Gresh and Keith, they played. They tried to lend some context to it and play a longer clip because there's just a 15 second clip yeah. going around of him saying that, and it makes it. It actually made it sound worse. Yeah, can we hear this real quick? Yeah, you think Cliff Kingsbury may be the scapegoat in regards to their struggles? It ain't no maybe. He will. He will be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he will be. Uh-huh. He will be. And the crazy thing about it, the guy who hired him will still have a job. Yep. It's, it's, it sounds about right. I, I Initially, I was thinking that they probably would stick with him because of the contractual agreement he has. But now just seeing how bad they've been. And then man, they the fired court. a coach out the at the at the season, man. Yeah. And he assigned, he signed that extension last March. But see, just verbally now, vocally, Kyler Murray is talking about 
and and I don't like how he's doing that. I think he should keep some things privately, but it tells me he doesn't care about the head coach, his head coach. And he's putting everything on the head coach, basically saying Kyler Murray don't care about nobody but Kyler Murray. <laughs> That's just a matter of the fact. Well, well, yeah, well, I, I got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, hey, I can't, I can't argue with you. I don't know him personally. You played with him for a few years, so I got to take your word for it. So it that, wasn't the other one. Sorry, Larry Fitzgerald retired early because he didn't want to deal with Kyler Murray. That was the other one. It was two. Okay. There's Patrick Peterson and Larry Fitzgerald basically saying, I ain't dealing with this anymore. This guy's spoiled. This guy's a brat. This guy, like, is just doesn't, we don't think alike. So I'm not even going to bother trying to coexist with this guy. I'd rather retire. So Patrick Peterson played on the Colonels for nine seasons. Yeah. I think that this is, even giving the context to it makes it worse. Because it's not as if he was primed to give that answer. He pulled that answer out like he's he's been walking around saying that since he left them in 2020. Like for him to talk about what's going to happen with Cliff Kingsbury, all this is going to fall on the coach. And what about, you know, the GM who hired the coach and ownership and this? And it's like, oh, it's Kyler Murray only cares about Kyler Murray. So Kyler Murray also like, you know, so he, he hears the criticism and he's rabbit ears like crazy. And so his comment would be, hey, where was all this noise when we were 10 and 2? Remember, like, what was it? They got this fast start last year. They were yeah. 10 and 2. I would say, what happened? You were 10 and 2. Then how did it end? Like, they just they just crumbled. Sounded like a lot of things that Ben Volan listed, what you just read from. They they got smashed yeah, in their offseason. Some things happened. that they could control and some things that were not in their control. Yeah, so it, so, so they didn't handle just it circle well. back. Like, if you're, 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 you, have a, you have an obvious... Great opportunity you have here. A the next franchise two weeks. and a team in disarray. Oh man, beyond they're not belief. good. They're not good on the field, and they have major issues in the locker room. They have major issues off the field. Their coach is on a burning hot seat. Mm. Everything is a mess out there. Fourier has been predicting Cliff Kingsbury is going to be fired for I think two months now. Well, really? no, it's because that was no, that was that's not a dig by the way. That like, was part of my little little how they're going to win. It's yeah. kind of remarkable that. He, Cliff Kingsbury, no disrespect, man, but it's kind of remarkable that you still have your job at this point. Well, so listen, Patrick so was, Peterson saying, like, look at look at all this crap that you're dealing with. So the Cardinals are 12th place in the in the NFC, thir- three games out of the final wild card spot. They're not going to get it. The offense can't score. They're only averaging 19.3 points uh, per game. The defense I thought they allows... were going to contend for the West this year. Like I really, so did. Did I, I thought that there was a real possibility they'd be up there with the Rams, who I didn't think would suck either, and uh, the Niners. I, I didn't think the Seahawks would based do this. on what. Based on their last season and they, how the Rams kicked their ass in the playoffs, I know, but I'm like, all right, well, they're a playoff team at least, and it seems like they're putting something together here. Something special. And this year they came out and have been a, a mess. Well, going back to the origin of this, though, so, I mean, this is all to spell out what a disaster Arizona is. Hmm. And so Bedard's take is that this game against a franchise in complete disarray, a disaster situation, that this is what Bill's future with the Patriots hangs on. I don't, I find every part of this take or report or whatever you would call it that Bedard is putting out there very bizarre. And I say it because I don't think this is the most important game that Bill is, that Bill has coached since Brady left. I think probably one of the most important was when Brady came back. In week four of last season, that was a pretty important game. Okay, different, I think we forget about that one. A different Wait, aspect I got of other, important, I've, I've got other ones. How about that second Jets game a couple weeks ago that I think was the only game this season that we said was absolutely must win, and that was not even through the halfway point of the season. We said you have to beat this Jets team a You're second time. You're coming off a bye. You have to. They're in your division. Like You have to have some respect in your division. So for that first part, I totally don't agree with that. Yes, they should win this game. I believe on Bedard's podcast, he says that he expects them to win this game. So there's that. But the other side of this is what what I believe, like I agree with Tommy Curran coming on our podcast, our, our podcast, our radio show, his podcast, all the other platforms that he's on saying that it's possible Belichick has a tighter leash with the Crafts going into this offseason than you would expect, or that he's on thin ice, or however you want to say it. But it's about what happens in the offseason. Like, I'm sorry, regardless of what happens going forward, I think realistically, this is a lost season for the Patriots. Your quarterback regressed. If you sniff the playoffs and you get into the playoffs, it'll be miraculous for you to make it past the first round. Yeah. If you have a playoff win, that's that's like a... That, that's like a Cinderella story. And I don't mean to come off so negative. It's just the reality of where you are. 
And what determines the future of Belichick with the franchise is going to be if he can make the dramatic moves that the offense requires in the offseason. If he can bring in the play caller, if he can add the needed, the much needed protection and other playmakers for Mac Jones. That's where he's on thin ice is more the GM side of it in the offseason than what happens with these next couple of weeks and certainly what happens on Monday Night Football. I just find that whole take so odd. Go to John real quick because I'm I'm curious about the whole judgment day. Like, yeah, this I like, is like Oh so, no, doomsday scenario. John's in the car. John, you're on. Yeah, hi guys. How you doing? Hey, John. Yeah, I don't think Belichick's job is um, I don't think Belichick's job is at stake at all in terms of the Crafts firing him. But here's what I do think is at stake. I think what happens if they lose this game tonight. I think at that point. There's no way Belichick's going to be able to spin to craft this off season that he wants to bring um, P- Patricia and Judge back. And then if he doesn't, and if he wants to bring them back, and Kraft says no, then there's a possibility Bill leaves in his own. So that's what I think Judgment Day may be: is Kr- Belichick may leave in his own. If the Patriots do well, if they win three out of the next five, maybe play, have a good, maybe get into the postseason, have a good game, then you can see Bill. Spin in this to craft. Yeah, this just took a little longer than we thought. Matty P's okay. We'll we'll do fine this upcoming season. And and that's I hope that that doesn't happen. I'd rather the Patriots get blown out tomorrow night, knowing that Judge and Patricia are both going to be gone if that happens. Thank you, John. Here's I think the thing. he meant Monday night. And uh, I, here's the other thing I think will happen. I don't think um like firing Patricia, I think, is something that Bill won't do. He put him in a position that he was doomed to fail in. And I don't think he really personally holds him accountable, right? It's like, listen, it was my bad for thinking you were were capable of doing something that obviously you weren't. My bad. My bad. But they reassign him. I do, yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's leaving the building. He's not leaving, but he's he's not going to be in this position. Does the caller, John, made it sound like he thinks that there's a possibility that he stays in as offensive coordinator in in the offseason? Not a chance. How? Wouldn't that be the ultimate? Just that wouldn't that way. just be the ultimate stubborn move by Bill? Yes, like that would just. And I feel like that he's got it in him. Like screw you, I'm doing it anyways. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let me ask you this, because everyone's got that. My in system's them. so good, anybody can run. Yeah, it, right. Like, coaches are coaches, yeah. right? We switched it up. Everyone has that stubbornness in them. True. Everybody does. But don't you have to be kind of like pushed to an extent to be that stubborn? What do you like, mean pushed okay, to so, be stubborn? Even so, you, that arrogant. Yeah, like I don't see how what the crafts have done to him or what they would do that would push him to be that stubborn, like to push back that much. Unless like they out of came spite, in, like he's going to push like, back out of spite. I feel like the only situation where something like that could happen would be if they came in and they were like, you know what, you can't be Instacart lady anymore, to quote you. Like you can't go <laughs> shopping for your own groceries. We're bringing in somebody to oversee this. And you're like, fine, F you. I'm going to then have Matt, Matty P, my best mm-hmm. friend, be Offensive coordinator. Well, again. then, but then like you're it's playing. It's got to be like a spike game. See, then I think you're now. You're, now you're playing a game that you're undoubtedly going to lose. Because yeah. I'll just fire you. But going like, down it, in flames. Yeah. If it, it's, yeah. If that's if that's the life. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Like I'll eat it. I'll be fine. A lot of TV money coming in. Like <laughs> well, we'll be fine. I'll bring in a young coach, and I'll. You know, what? I'm going to fire your son too. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you play nice. Let's go to Pat in Marshfield. Pat, you're on. Hey, Yo, Pat. Hey, what's up? Nothing. Um, oh, my God. So, Come I on. think, I mean, the biggest problem with this team right now is the offensive line. They can't protect the quarterback whatsoever. And, I mean, if the quarterback's protected, then I think almost everything else will fall into place. All right. Thank you, Pat. Uh, that was oh, some, man. There were some pauses in Who's there. Who's in charge of that offensive line again, by the way? That'd be uh, Matty P. Yeah, Patricia. Yeah, Patricia. Matt Patricia. That's all. That's really Bill. Maybe another yeah. thing you could reassign him from. Well, Bill's in charge of everything. I would put like, him back to the defense. Say- I'd give him a defensive position to coach. He would be cornerbacks, linebackers, D-line, whatever. Whatever. He would be back on the defensive side. What? Ryan wants to point something out to you. You just said position again. This is <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. It just it got me. What did I say? It's kind of cute, position. actually. It's kind of cute. Hi, Daddy. I would like a... <laughs> Can I have a bicycle? <laughs> absolutely yeah, ridiculous. I love it. Anyway, so I don't know. Like I, I just don't buy it. I get, I get what he's saying about. I believe that uh, that Robert Kraft and definitely Jonathan Kraft are pissed off 
that they got flexed out of Sunday night football for the Commanders and Giants, which actually has playoff implications. It makes even more sense now seeing, I know they flexed it out before that Raiders game last night, but it makes even more sense what a dud of a game that could be. Uh, But other than saying like, hey, this is your last time in primetime this season, so make it count. Like, I just don't buy that this is the most important post-Brady era and that his fu- game and that his future hinges on it. It's just a stretch to no, me. I Maybe know, people down it, there are saying that. Hey, but nobody's listening. But it, but it's real, though. So it is percolating. So if anybody had any issues with him in the past, like now's your opening to or really. Kill huh? Bill. Kill Bill volume 50. Mm.